Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Nalo and today we're taking a deeper look at Operation Riptide. I did this type of video for Operation Broken Fang as well, and doing a video later on into the operation it seems to be a good idea because we have a better idea of how some of the mechanics of the operation works and we have a better idea of how the market is going so far. Before we dive in though, let's take a look at the sponsor for today's video, which is ShadowPay. ShadowPay is a relatively new marketplace and I'd like to invite you to come check it out and buy and sell some CSGO skins using the website. If you my link in the description you'll get a 2% bonus to your deposit so you can do that and get some extra money. The biggest benefit of ShadowPay is that there's instant trades being made directly between the buyer and the seller with the help of a browser extension. On the website there is tons of skins and there's filters for advanced searching. If you want to sell an item just set a price and when a buyer appears you'll have a notification you can just send them a skin and you'll receive the funds on your ShadowPay account. If you don't want to wait you can use instant sell and sell directly to ShadowPay service without waiting for the buyer. ShadowPay offers a lot of money withdrawal options, cryptocurrencies, bank or card withdraw, or you can even transfer to the website. If you want to check out ShadowPay, use the link in the description below. My code is NALO. So let's dive into Operation Riptide. Starting off, one thing I wanted to touch on that wasn't known at the time of the previous video was that the Glock phase odds are actually equally shared between each phase. So instead of it being, oh, you get an M4 Coalition or you get a Glock Gamma Doppler, instead it's you get an M4 Coalition or you get Glock Gamma Doppler Phase 1, 2, 3, and 4, or Emerald. Oddly enough, Emerald actually has an equally shared phase as well, which means it's about a 1 in 6 chance to get an Emerald, which is pretty crazy. As a result of this, the M4 Coalition isn't in fact rarer and does actually command a higher price on the Steam Community Market. So basically when you open up the train collection or you do a trade up for it, you actually have a 16% chance to get the M4 Coalition, which is actually extremely low odds and I think that definitely worked in its favor despite it not being so great of a skin. Investment wise, this does actually kind of come out to a pretty good option. You basically have to pay $45 minimum in order to create a new one from the Operation Riptide page, or you have to do a trade up for it which is going to be even more expensive. So there's already a money gate behind it, but on top of that there's a rarity gate behind it as as well as there's only a 16% chance to even get one. The only thing I think works against the M4 Coalition as an investment is that there are already other similar M4s that a lot of people consider better. This one doesn't really add anything new or spicy to the lineup, so I think long term there's not going to be a whole ton of hype for it. Now technically speaking, each Glock phase also only has a 16% chance, but since there is generally lower difference between the four main phases, the only thing here with any major difference is the Emerald, which itself has a 16% chance. So I think for that reason, if you're going to buy an investment here, I would go with the Emerald. Long term, not only is it still pretty rare, but unlike the Coalition, it's unique, it's green, which is a pretty rare thing to see for skins, and it's an Emerald, which has a lot of hype behind it already. So if you're deciding between a Glock Gamma Doppler or an M4 Coalition, either go with a Factory New Coalition or a Glock Emerald. That would be my best advice for the long term. Another thing that I wanted to mention regarding prices and when those prices are going to be at their lowest is when new missions come out. New missions come out around every Wednesday, so that'll be the time that everybody is getting their stars and buying new items and putting more into circulation. This is going to cause the prices of everything to fall, so if you're looking to get into an investment, you're going to want to wait till then. As for the best week to buy these in, I would definitely kind of aim more towards the end of the operation because that's when there's a potential pass sale and more people spending all of their stars, especially those people that saved up their stars the entire operation. Also in the operation is coming to a close, there will be people boosting accounts and spam buying stickers or cases, depending on which one has a better profit return at the time, so the cheapest price on stickers is probably going to be then. Another topic that's been talked about quite a bit is the major souvenir re-releases. So obviously they've released some new collections here, and they've kind of given some of the old collections some much needed upkeep, and have created a lot of new skins for these collections and new tiers of skins as well. The question surrounding this is, are the new collections going to be used during the major? Now this is still pretty debated, but there are a lot of people that think that these new collections are going to be used used in the new major and therefore are going to have souvenir re-releases of the skins. But there are also people saying this isn't going to happen because the major is going to overlap with the operation, which could cause them to just use the old collections since these ones are being used for the operation, and maybe Valve wants to make them more exclusive. I personally think they are going to use the new collections in the major, and I think we will see a souvenir re-release of a lot of these skins. So right now might not be the best time to buy into them, however, depending on which side of this topic you stand on, I've created a couple different investment strategies for you. 
And by the way, quick side note, Train is actually not in the active duty map pool. Ancient actually replaced Train, so the new Train collection won't be seeing a souvenir re-release until later on. Alright guys, let's get into these different optimal investment strategies that I've come up with depending on which side of this topic you stand on. Alright, so starting off, only looking at Riptide items for the next 5 months or so, I have two paths. The first path is if there is a major souvenir re-release. So if there is going to be souvenir gold aberesques and stuff like that, then obviously there's going to be a lot more of those flooding the market and for a cheaper price, and they're going to look better because they're souvenirs. As a result, if there is a re-release, I would go with the train collection. Now that doesn't just mean the covers from the train collection, that means any tier of skin from the train collection right now. So for example, the op pop-op is a really good option, I think. The RA blaze could be a solid option. There's just a few different ones from the train collection that I would look towards. And that's just for right now because train is not in the active duty map pool, so there's no risk of getting souvenir versions of the new train collection. Now if there's no souvenir re-release and they use the old collections, then I would aim your sights towards the new collection purples and pinks, mostly because these are going to be used the most for trade-ups and a lot of these are going to be moved around. There's going to be a huge amount of volume in this purple and pink area, plus the pinks are used to trade up to coverts, so again, a lot of volume there. So I think those are going to be your best option from these new collections. The highest volume with kind of low to mid prices is probably going to be Dust 2. Vertigo is going to be the lowest volume with the highest prices, and Mirage is going to be the middle prices with middle volume. So based on that, you can choose what to look towards. And just to recap, if there is a re-release, go for the train collection because it's not going to be in the active duty map pool for the major. And if you think there's not going to be a re-release, look towards the new collections, purples and pinks from Dust2, Mirage, and Vertigo. Now, if you just want to be fully safe here and you don't want to have to worry about re-releases or anything like that, just buy the Operation Pass. That's going to be the safest, most guaranteed form of profit. It'll probably take a while to see significant returns on it, but historically, Operation Passes are the most guaranteed way to profit off of an operation. You can also look towards stickers, but again, I would wait till the end of the operation to do that. And the final investment strategy that I wanted to talk about is a long-term strategy concerning all items in CSGO. So basically we can look at anything here long-term based on Operation Riptide, what I think is going to be a solid investment strategy. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and say Hydra collections are going to be a really good option here. The Gods and Monsters collection, the Rising Sun collection, and the Chop Shop collection. I have a few different reasons for this. The first one is that there is confirmed no collection re-releasing, at least for a long while. As we've seen with the recent operations, new collections are released each each time. They don't re-release collections, so unless they change this at some point in the future, I, I don't think we're going to see Hydra collections anytime soon. There's also no maps associated with these collections, so there's not going to be any souvenir drops that can happen for the Rising Sun, Chop Shop, or Gods and Monsters collections, and the more operations with no re-release decreases the uncertainty each time, so there's going to be less uncertainty in the market with these Hydra items. They're also a great apex point of sorts of looks and scarcity, because they're pretty rare and they look really nice, and they still have volume because not only are they a solid investment choice for a lot of people. They're not too pricey and they still look nice. If you disagree or if you think there's another thing that you can possibly invest in, then that's great. I think there are a lot of great things to invest in going forward here, especially coming on to winter. But for me, those are going to be the optimal choices. We've actually seen a lot lower prices than we're probably expected for a lot of these items. Generally, CSGO market health is not as great as it was before, so obviously that's going to cause some lower pricing. There's not a whole lot of people buying right now. It's kind of an awkward time for an operation. So for that reason, the market is a little bit weird right now. But I think we're going to see some activity pick up as we go forward, especially into the major, as we haven't had a major for quite a while now, and a new major will definitely bring a lot of people back that were interested in the competitive aspect of CSGO. So we have a lot to look forward to. Hopefully you guys are enjoying Operation Riptide. Let me know what you think of the operation so far, and let me know what you think of the missions, and if you're going to get that diamond coin possibly. It looks really nice. And let me know what you're investing in in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video, guys. That's all I really have for you in this deep dive. Hopefully these investment strategies are helpful to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for the best investment tips anywhere else on YouTube for CSGO. Be sure to check out my Twitter and Discord server with links below as well. And of course, be sure to check out ShadowPay using my link to get a 2% deposit bonus. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Peace.